for a lot of our games, two player or four player games, we have players who can't find a full table of opponents. And so we like to include a system in the box that can replace a player. And we call these bots or solo opponents. And the function of a solo opponent is to take the place of another player in the game. So we always try to make sure that when you're playing a game solitaire or with a solo opponent or with a bot, the game plays the same way for you as a player, even if the bot is doing things that a player normally wouldn't do. And so to give you a couple examples of that, sometimes in order to keep things simple, the bot will take actions that just fill up spaces on the board or flip over and resolve a card when a player wouldn't normally be able to do that. And that keeps the game feeling the same way as if it was a multiplayer game without the overhead of having to sort through all the decisions that a player might make on their turn. So there's a very important balance between making sure that the bot is making decisions in a smart way that evoke the sense of the game, and then the, all the work that goes into running something like that when you're sitting at the table trying to play a game. And what we've found is that the more work that it takes to run a solo opponent or a bot in a game, the less likely that players are to really enjoy the experience. GMT1 is one of our projects at GMT to support our solitaire designers. We work with dozens of design teams and some of them have great solitaire designers built into the teams and others don't know anything about solitaire design. So we provide consulting and design uh, service for them and help them make their games as excellent as possible for solitaire players. The genesis of GMT1 comes from a couple years ago when I noticed that we had a lot of bots in our games that had been done by very talented developers and designers um, and we wanted to unify their efforts and put together um, one coherent and consistent way that we did solitaire play. Uh, so I went to Gene and said, I'd really like to do this. I'd like to lead the effort. I think it would be great. And Gene said, go make it happen. So here we are three years later and we have games like Twilight Struggle Red Sea and Flashpoint South China Sea that have built-in solitaire systems that are fun, quick to use, and our players really enjoy them. The first thing you have to do anytime you design a bot system is really understand the design of the game. So I sat down with Jason Matthews and we played the game, we talked about the game, I understood what it was he was doing, and I really focused on what it feels like to play Twilight Struggle Red Sea. Because the thing that I wanted to do was make sure that every time that someone sat down to play it solitaire, they had the same feel as if they were playing it two players. Once you figure out what the feel is, then you can start doing the actual design work. So for Twilight Struggle Red Sea, the major issue was to figure out how to simulate having a hand of cards without the bot actually having a hand of cards. We solved that and several other problems and got to a place where we felt good about testing bot hundreds of playtest games to get it exactly right. Once the bot was working the way we wanted, then we did usability testing. So we tried several different ways to lay out the information for our gamers to make sure that the bot was easy to use and that there was no ambiguity or mistakes. And once that was done, we go to art and layout. So the entire process took about six months. For Red Sea, the best part about the solitaire game was the limited number of cards in the game. As a player, you have to know them really well to play the game well. And the bot has specific instructions for how to play many of those cards. That's not something we could do in a game that had 100 or 200 cards, but in a game that has a smaller number, we can tailor the bot specifically to each of the different cards and make sure that it can execute them correctly. With Twilight Struggle Red Sea, the game is very conditional for a lot of the card play. So you will only play an event card if the state of the board is exactly right to take advantage of it. Otherwise, you're probably gonna use the card for operations points. And the conditions for the cards can be very narrow. Sometimes the cards are very bad for you to play, and sometimes they're very good for you to play. And that can be the same card in the same game with two different circumstances. For a game like Flashpoint South China Sea, that's not true. The cards in this game are generally good for you if they belong to you, so they're always something that you would want to play. And so the bot behavior in a game like this can be driven in a much more straightforward fashion than a game like Twilight Struggle Red Sea. 
in a sense, it's hard to compare because the system in this game is completely different than the system in Twilight Struggle Red Sea. There's almost nothing in common between the two of them, which comes back to what I said before, making sure that you understand the feel of a game and what the designer is intending, and then designing a Solidist system that really evokes that specific feel is the core challenge of what GMT1 is trying to do. I'm really excited to see players experience a smaller version of Twilight Struggle that they can know really, really well. I think it will lead to more competitive play, and with the Solitaire system, I expect that players are going to find that our difficulty levels that we've built into it are a great aid in learning the game and keeping it fresh and fun. Um, it's never fun when you play a game for the first time and lose badly, but it's also not fun when the game can't raise the stakes and challenge to keep you engaged over a long period of time.